Our world is full of characters. We root for and against them. They can cheer us up or make us weep. They capture us with song and plot. But there is more than this world by an awful lot. Across all worlds, these characters can be broken down to very similar components. Their basic defining qualities are all the same, but their lives, motivations, and reputations can be vastly contrasting. Journey with me as we design the heroes and villains of the Disney multiverse. Today we will be scavenging the sea in search of one of the most famous pirates to ever set sail, Captain James Hook. In charge of his crew in the famous Jolly Roger, James is most recognizable and memorable for his metal hook in place of his left hand. As we all know, all characters in the Disney multiverse have a singular defining characteristic or event shared among variants, and Captain Hook is no exception. Every James in the known multiverse does eventually lose their hand and take up the mantle of Captain Hook, though the events leading up to and following the hand loss are subject to change. In our world, Captain Hook is more known as a villain trying to get revenge on Peter Pan for cutting off his hand and avoiding the jaw of the crocodile who ate it. There is a world, however, where Captain Hook willingly gives up his hand. Our first stop will be Earth 3591. In this world, Captain Hook is revered as England's greatest protector, fighting off sea beasts, the likes of Kraken, Megalodon, and Siren to name a few. However, one night, a shadow was cast over England, carrying away all the boys in one swoop. The king and queen recruited James to retrieve all of the children and bring them home. James set sail with his crew aboard the Jolly Roger. A few days after searching island after island, James was about to give up. Suddenly, a towering crocodile beast emerged from the water. He spoke to James, informing him that he saw the shadow carrying the children away, and he knows where to. James begged for the information, but the crocodile needed something in return. He asked James for his hand. James paused to think. He could save the lives of children and bring them home safely, but at the cost of his hand? Tick tock, the crocodile said, reminding James that he needs to move fast. James agreed, and the crocodile chomped down on his arm. Holding up his end of the deal, the crocodile pointed James in the direction of Neverland and told him Peter Pan was responsible. The crew used spare metal around the ship to construct a new arm topped with a hook. James, now dubbed as Captain Hook, had his sights set on Neverland. We've seen a Captain Hook both willingly and unwillingly lose their hand, but there is a world where he lost much more. Now we venture to Earth 3108. On this Earth, James's tussle with Peter Pan ended pretty poorly. Instead of cutting off a hand for the crocodile, Peter Pan pushed James fully into the jaw of the beast. Pan fled the scene as James was being chomped to bits. Smee and the rest of the crew fought tooth and nail to pry the mouth of the croc open. They saved Hook at the last possible second. For any longer, he would have been a goner. His mind was surprisingly still functional, but his body was beyond repair. The crew, not willing to lose their captain, took all of their collected booty and spare metal around the ship and melted it down like blacksmiths. They forged the perfect robotic pirate body. They chopped out the captain's functional organs and installed them in the machine. The electricity from Hook's brain powered the robotic body. Hook, 
now back alive, has two scores to settle. One, track down and slaughter the crocodile, which he now wears as a cape. Two, hunt down Peter Pan and feed him to a beast. Goodness, I like pirates. Well, that'll be it for today, guys. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you when we next design the heroes and villains of the Disney multiverse. See you guys later.